Have you ever looked at the jet boil cook system or the MSR reactor cook systems and wondered if they were worth the money that they're charging for them? Because let's face it, they are expensive. Well, before you lay your hard-earned cash down on either of those, I've got an alternative you may want to consider first. This is the Boulin S2400 pot and their BL100-B15 stove. If you're interested in hearing about these two items, keep watching. Before I begin, I just want to thank the company King Camp for sending these items to me so that I could share them with you. So what I thought we would do is go down to my bench here where I'll go over both the pot and the stove, looking at them closely and some of the specifications for them, how they work together. And then I'm also going to discuss how you can use the stove and the pot separately with other items to get more versatility from them. And then, of course, I'm going to cook my lunch with them and we'll demonstrate how they work. All right, as you can see, I put everything back in the stuff sack so I can show you what it looks like all packed up and ready to go. So once again, this is the Boulin S2400 hard anodized heat exchanger style pot and nested inside of this is the Boulin BL100-B15 remote gas canister stove. So here it is all nested together. What I don't have in here is a gas canister itself. I have eight ounce gas canisters and they're just a tiny bit too large to nest with the other items inside. Uh, I can do it, but the lid sits a little proud on top, so I decided not to. However, if you have a four ounce canister, it'll fit in and everything will close up just nicely. So I'm going to take everything out, but I just wanted to show you what it looked like in this state. And then combined with the bags and everything else, this comes in at 23.8 ounces or 675 grams. All right, let's open up the stuff sack, take the combination pot and stove out. So the stuff sack itself is just a simple nylon mesh, nothing special about it. It's functional and it's lightweight. So that's all you really need from a stove like this. So here is the pot and inside we have the stove. So I thought what I'd do is take a quick look at the pot and give you some close-ups and some specifications for it. And then I'll open up the stove. We'll do the same for the stove and then we'll show how the two of these things work together. So once again, the BLS2400, 1.5 liter, they refer to it as an energy saving pot, but really that refers to the fact that it has a built-in heat exchanger. And I'm going to talk a bit about this because this is my first pot that has a heat exchanger on it and I was interested to see how well they work. Now, they call it a 1.5 liter pot, but I did do some measurements. I put in all the water that it would hold right up to the top and it actually measures in at 1.8 liters. And I found that kind of uh, good to see because most of the time, a lot of the pots that I buy, they're quite optimistic when they give their measurements. So usually the whatever they call it, like a 750 pot, it's 750 to the limit. I like that this actually holds more than they advertise. Uh, because that means you have some working room inside of the pot. So 1.5 liters inside of this, or maybe a little bit more, is a safe working volume to put inside of it. So the weight of this pot with the lid, of course, comes in at 11.1 ounces, which is 315 grams. The height top to bottom is six and one eighths inches, which is 15.8 centimeters. And the diameter, and this is internal, I'm giving it to you from the inside to the inside is five and one eighths inches or 13 centimeters. And the reason I gave you the internal diameter is because if you have something you want to see will nest down inside, it's more important to know what the internal diameter is than and what it is at measured on the outside of that rolled edge. Okay, so it's a hard anodized material. It appears to be high quality in nature. Now, I don't have an MSR reactor to compare it against, but I have looked at them in the stores. And as far as I can see, this pot least approaches the quality of the MSR reactor pot. I can't say that this is any better or just as good, but they look very similar. All right, so that's the pot. Let's put it aside. And you can see it does have a folding handle covered with a silicone cover on the outside and the stand-up D-ring on top that is also covered with silicone on the top of it. So here's the stove. So now the stove again comes in a nice little nylon sack. Again, nothing special. Functional and lightweight. Keeps everything together and that's what's important. All right, so here is the BL. 
100-B15 stove. And first thing I want to say about this stove, and it is a remote canister stove, is that this is an updated version. So if you were to Google or search the Bulin BL100, dash B15 remote gas canister stove. You might see one that looks different than this, which would be the older version. You might see one that looks like it has a domed mesh on top, uh, similar to the MSR reactor and a few of the other stoves of that genre. Uh, this is their improved version. So they've updated that. Now, what are the updates? I understand, I don't have the older one. I understand that there's a better performance from this style and Probably even more importantly is that with the older one, there was an issue where you had to be careful using the gas canister uh, remote stove feed as it could come awfully close to the heat and cause damage to it. So this one is designed to eliminate that issue, making sure that the feed goes underneath the legs and well away from any of the heat. So what can you see about the stove right off the top? Look how big that is. That is huge, very low to the ground and very big. The stability of this is just outstanding. I, I, I don't have anything that even compares in terms of stability. This is just <laughs> stable is the only way to say it. And the size of that burner and that is also something that's going to feature into when I cook my lunch because what uh, unlike a lot of the stoves I have that have much smaller burners, they oftentimes cause hot spots in the center of a fry pan or a pot, more importantly in a fry pan because you don't like things sticking. This has its heat distributed nicely and so you get more heat distributed across the bottom of any pot or pan. So uh, you should get a more efficient burn, a more efficient boil, better gas mileage if you will and less chances of things getting burnt on the inside. Okay, let's give you some specifications for this. So the weight of this unit comes in at 12.7 ounces or 360 grams. The height from the ground, ground to the top is 2.8 inches, which is 72 millimeters. And the diameter across this when it is closed is 4.4 inches or 115 millimeters. But across the top when it is open is 8.7 inches, which is 221 millimeters. Now it is designed to be used with the BL1 or 2400 S2400 pot, but it can be used with other pots and pans as well. In fact, I'll be demonstrating how I'm going to use it with a fry pan to cook my lunch. But I wondered just how smart, small a pot you could put on this safely. And uh, well, it does have little extensions on these legs that roll inwards or flip inwards. And uh, let's see, I did write this down somewhere. What is the smallest pot I thought you could put on top of this safely? Well, about a 10 centimeter, or sorry, 12 centimeter. I, I, you might, well, you can't, not safely. You can't get a 750 milliliter pot like the titanium ones or the GSI Space Saver mugs. You can't get those on top of this safely. They won't rest on all three legs at the same time. Honestly, this is too big a stove for any one of those pots anyway, but I can use my 12 centimeter zebra pot on top of this quite safely. There is just enough coverage or set on top of the, each of the extensions that I can use it quite safely. So yeah, it's, it's not a stove that you can use every pot on. Okay, so let me show you how these things work in combination. So what this combination does for you, it creates a compact unit in terms of the way they go together that is very, very energy efficient, as you'll hear in a moment and very wind protected. So when you set this on top of it, let's see if I'm in close enough, none of the burner is exposed to any lateral winds coming through it. So it is completely enclosed in the heat exchanger at the bottom. So you're, all the heat is being directed at the bottom of the pot and up through the heat exchanger. Now I know that's not original to this one. All of the good brands like Jetboil and MSR do the same thing, but this is an alternative to a lot of setups that you might get that could be less efficient due to wind robbing heat away or, well, well, let's talk about the heat exchanger for a moment as well. Put the stove aside for a moment and I have something else I wanna bring in to show you how I use them in combination. So there's the heat exchanger and basically it's just like radiator fins all around the outside 
the flame and heat is allowed to go up through the center and they will pass through the fins and then vent out through the holes around the side. The concept being is that more the heat is captured and transferred to the metal than would be if it was just a regular flat bottom pot. And it also, as I mentioned a minute ago, protects it from any lateral winds or breezes. So the, the downside of my thinking was, well, look how much weight and bulk it adds to a pot because obviously I've got, well, at least three quarters of an inch extra extension on the bottom of the pot and some volume decrease around the uh, circumference of it that I wondered if it was added bulk without added uh, efficiency. Well, I was pleasantly, presently surprised as I'll show you in a few minutes time when I experimented with a few other gas stoves and this pot as well. All right, I wanna talk for a moment about the performance I was able to get from this stove. First off, in combination with the stove, or this pot in combination with the stove, and then the performance I was able to get from this pot with a couple of other stoves, and what you can do with this stove to get more versatility from it. So, a bit to go through. So, to start with, I did the standard boil test in this pot at home, so not out in the woods, but I used 500 milliliters of room temperature water, which is two cups, and with this stove in combination as it was intended to be used, one minute, 25 seconds to boil using eight grams of fuel. So that was fast, there's no question. I wouldn't say eight grams is especially fuel efficient, but it's not bad, it's not bad at all. I, you know, I do have a stove that would give me a better performance than that in terms of fuel efficiency, but a minute and 25 seconds, that's pretty impressive performance nonetheless. And I think the only reason that it used up eight grams of fuel is, well, again, look at the size of the burner on this thing, but there are some advantages to a burner that side that will go over in a few minute time. So I did say I used this pot with a couple of other stoves to see what I could get from it in terms of performance. So uh, one thing that I did try, uh, I'm gonna show you, but I'm not saying I recommend doing this. This is one of the small ultralight titanium stoves. There's a number of brands of these stoves on the market. This one was sent to be by Near Zero. They sent it along with another product that I'm reviewing separately. But you know, they, they're small, lightweight, highly efficient stoves. They're noisy, and one of the things I find about them is that they have a very small burner on them, so all the heat is directed to one point on the bottom of the pot. Now, if all you're doing is burning water, that's not an issue, not at all. But if you're trying to fry anything and you want the heat distributed across your pan, that can create some real hot spots on a lot of pans. But what I wanted to know is, could I use this in combination with the pot? Well, you can, it will fit, just fit inside as you see, and there's enough clearance, there's head space with the pot stand, the pot rests and the burner to, uh, to make this work. Um, it's not as wind protected from the side, as you can see, there is some of the burner exposed. And it worked, like I said, it worked. I just uh, made a cup of tea when I first arrived out here in the woods. My issue with this is stability. So if you have everything well, you can see it doesn't take much to rock it off of the pot. If you have a very stable setup on level ground and you have water in your pot so it holds the weight to the bottom, uh, it will work for you. But I would not recommend this as a regular loose use item with this pot. It will work. That's all I'm going to say is that you can do it, but you have to be very, very careful. But what I did use with this pot that I really think worked well was my Camping Moon XD2F. That is the pressure regulated stove that I recently reviewed. And I decided to run it with this pot with 500 milliliters of water again. And I got a minute and 25 seconds from that. Okay, that's that's not bad, right? I, I wondered... Um, <sighs> You know, that's not any better than it was on top of this stove. However, I only used five grams of fuel, so <laughs> it was more efficient in terms of fuel, but the timing wasn't any, fa any faster, so that's okay. But I needed the comparison to see what else I could get. So I ran the same um, stove, the, the um, Camping Moon stove, with my Uberleben a titanium Kessel, which is a 13 centimeter titanium pot, and I got a minute and 35 seconds. So what does that tell me? With a titanium pot, same size and diameter, but without the heat exchanger on the bottom, is that the heat exchanger works. 10 seconds off of the boil time. 
Um, again, it didn't save a whole lot of fuel, but it is more efficient in terms of time. It did, I, I don't know that I remember, yes, I did five grams. So it, it came out to about the same amount of fuel used regardless of which stove. The fact was this was just a little bit faster and it was, I believe, because of that heat exchanger on the bottom. All right, I did another test with this pot and something completely different you normally wouldn't think of, and that is an alcohol stove. So I used the Trangia, I used the Firebox Nano, a little titanium one I have, put the, the Trangia in the Nano, put two pot, or two cups of water, 500 mils in this, and I got a boil time of five minutes and six seconds. That's not bad, really. Trangia is not known to be a super fast boiler, but, you know, that's not the reason you use Trangias. Trangias, they have other benefits going for them. So five minutes, six seconds. I thought that was pretty good, especially when I used the Uberleben Titanium Kessel again on the same setup with the Firebox Nano and the Trangia. And I got seven minutes, six seconds. So we're talking two minutes savings in boil time. Now, I, I can't tell you that I weighed the alcohol before and after to see how much it was consumed, but I can tell you it was the same stove running both times and I expect the consumption was consistent so with a two minute or yes a two minute savings in time I saved alcohol by using this pot. So what does that say about this pot when the heat exchangers they work they actually do work whether or not you think that they are worth the investment well that's a question you have to answer for yourself but I will tell you they do work. Okay let's just take another look at the stove itself. Bring the stove back in did I mention that this stove does not have a built-in piezoelectric lighter on it like a lot of stoves do? I think maybe it could be a bit of a safety issue. This sits so low to the ground that getting your fingers down that low to operate the lighter might be a little bit unsafe. So what they do give you is this remote one that you can carry with you. And if it stops working or you lose it, well, no big deal. You just use your Beck lighter to light this up. So again, that is a big stove, and I wondered about what could I do with other pots on top of this. So I mentioned a minute ago that I got a minute and 25 seconds using the Boolin 20, S2400 on top of it. Obviously, I had to use the Uberleben Titanium Kessel to see what it would get. And so same amount of water, same environmental conditions, two minutes, 25 seconds. So using this pot in combination with this stove, I was able to save one minute over using a small titanium pot of the same diameter. Again, I think that's proof that the heat exchanger does work. But that's not the only thing I wanted to see what I could do with this stove. As I mentioned, it's not a large diameter stove, or excuse me, it is a large diameter stove, but it won't handle large or small diameter pots. But it will handle a five pan. And in fact, today I'm gonna to be cooking my lunch over this stove using this fry pan. And the reason I believe this is gonna work so well is once again, look how wide that burner is. So it distributes the heat significantly across the bottom of the pan and that should help avoid any hot spots on the pan. Now I'm also going to do some baking so I will record all of this and show you how that works. Okay I think we've talked enough about the pot and the stove in combination as well how as they work with other stoves and other other pots. Let's cook some lunch. So there is my bannock in the little uh, steel cook plate on top of that little piece of non-stick material. Ready to go. One last thing to do, get the pie plate on upside down. Double check with my toothpick. Absolutely clean. Okay. Stove is turned off. I have to take this off of the burner. I'll set the bannock aside and I'll set back up to do my bacon and eggs. Now well, that bacon is looking great. So what I think I'll do is just push it to the edge of the fry pan. Maybe just pull it slightly off the heat. All I'm doing is just making some space here. There's some bacon fat still sm smoking in there as you can see. I gotta get that eggs in. Now normally you want eggs to cook at a much lower temperature than this is going to afford me so this isn't going to take very long for these things to fry. Uh, let's hope I don't ruin them that way. I think they're going to be okay. Oop, I think I got shell in there. I'm usually better than that. 
All right, wonderful lunch. Now let's get some water on so I can make some coffee. Turn the gas on. There we go. Put the pot on and then I'll put the heat on. Got about two cups of water in there, I guess. All right, my water has come to boil. I'm just going to turn it off completely, leave it set for a minute while I get the coffee ready to go. Rampage Coffee, of course. I'll uh, put a link to Rampage in the video description because uh, people ask, is this still my favorite coffee? And yes, it's still my favorite coffee. Using the AeroPress. Three. Now maybe I'll put a little bit more in today. If it's a bit too strong, I'll just add a little bit more water to it. All right, take the pot off, lid, stabilize the AeroPress. Pretty good. Quick stir. I think I can put just a touch more water in there. Okay, that's perfect. Put the lid on. Leave it set for about three or four minutes. I'll press it into my mug and we'll have some closing words on the Boolin pot and stove combination. And a little taste of coffee here. Oh, a little strong. Kind of hot, too. Give it a few seconds to cool off. And what we'll do, we'll have a few closing thoughts on the Bulin. At least I hope I'm pronouncing it. Bulin, Bulin. S2400 pot, 1.5 liter pot. And the Bulin BL100-B15 gas canister stove. So, uh, one of the things I want to point out about them is, of course, I'm going to provide you the link to where you can purchase these at King Camp. And they are listed separately. They're not listed as a combination to go together. Although, as you can see, they are designed and intended to go together, but they are listing them separately on their wood site, on their website, giving you the option to purchase them separately. I think they go much better together than they do separately. Having said that, that uh, that pot, like I said, it works on any any gas stove and it will save you some time, if not uh, some gas. So that's something you'll have to decide for yourself. That side for yourself. That stove is great, as you saw when I did the frying and the baking. It distributes the heat over a wider area, meaning less hot spots that you have to contend with, less burnt food stuck to the bottom of your pan. So both of them have benefits by themselves, but of course they are intended to work together. Okay, um, here's the question. When I opened up, I had drawn the comparison between these and the jet boil systems or the MSR reactor systems. Um, I can't compare them. I can't say this is as good, better, or inferior to. I expect that the uh, other two products are a good quality and work very well. May even work a little bit better than this one. Maybe a little bit more refined. But I don't think that's the only question that needs to be answered. Which is the better stove? It's which is the better value? I find it hard to believe that those stoves are worth more than twice what this one is worth. Uh, maybe they are, and, and I'm open to being corrected on that. Someone who owns both or has compared both that tell me they're, it's twice as good and that it's a good value to spend more money on a more expensive product because it is that much better. Convince me, all right? In the meantime, this works, and that's what I like about it. It's been functional, it's been dependable. Uh, I will say, though, I think it's important that I mention that the little piezoelectric lighter, it doesn't work on every spark. And now I don't know if that's true of other gas stoves, but this one, uh, sometimes it takes two or three presses of the button before it ignites the gas. So there's probably some tricks that I can improve that with, but um, yeah, I don't know if it's gonna wear out. If it does, no great loss. Then I just start using a Bic lighter or something else to light the stove with. Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm glad I have it. I think having owned it or ha owning it now, I don't think I would consider purchasing one of those two other systems because this works exactly the way it's intended to and exactly what I'm looking for in this type of a system. 
open to you. Okay, now, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts, your comments, your questions. If you have any experience with this or the other two stoves, uh, I'd be happy to hear those and, and share with you or have you share them with me and with everybody else. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.